Coming up on today's show, we are going to check out the Broncos' first unofficial depth chart for the preseason and emphasis on the word unofficial because, as Sean Payton said, if I could put it in pencil, I would. So don't overreact too much from this, but I think there are some things to take away in terms of the lens the coaching staff is looking through at some of these players. So let's jump into everything we have from the new depth chart. Starting the quarterback room, no surprises, right? Russ, Stidham, Ben DiNucci, QB 1, 2, and 3. Now speaking of Russell Wilson, I do want to borrow 30 seconds of your time and say he has been red hot in training camp. He has stacked a lot of good days on top of each other. Today he was awesome in the red zone drills. Him and Cortland Sutton were connecting for a lot of great throws and catches. Russell Wilson, the last week or so, the last, today is Wednesday, going back to Saturday, he has strung together a lot of very good practices in camp after a so-so start to training camp. Moving on to the running back room right now, nothing too surprising here, but I will say Tyler Beatty at running back three ahead of Tony Jones Definitely caught me by surprise. If I had to pick one who I thought would be ahead of the other, I would have gone with Tony Jones. All we hear about is the UDFA running back, Jaleel McLaughlin. He's running back five, but this is a good reminder of UDFAs are not just handed you know, great spots on the depth chart after a week or two of training camp. You need to show, you need to show and prove something in the preseason. So not too uh, uh, excuse me, shocked by that. Moving on to the wide receiver room now. Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, and Marvin Mims are your top three receivers. Judy and Sutton, no surprise. Mims feel, felt like the obvious candidate to slide up with the Tim Patrick injury. But the next wide receiver is Brandon Johnson, ahead of Marquez Callaway, Kendall Hinton, and Jalen Virgil. Also, you had Montreal Washington pretty far in the depth chart, uh, pretty far down, that is. But Brandon Johnson did get nicked up in practice. We'll unpack more of his injury status uh, in just a little bit. But Brandon Johnson was a UDFA signing last year out of UCF. He got injured in training camp, high ankle sprain. Didn't see him for quite some time after that. And then yesterday he went down in practice. And, well, Mike Kliss has some good news to share on that, saying Brandon Johnson has an ankle sprain, not as severe as last year's ankle injury, expected back in a week or two per source. And then also Mike McGlinchey is dealing with a knee sprain and he will miss the next few weeks. Hopefully it won't go into the regular season, but that's definitely something to monitor. But Brandon Johnson has been great so far through training camp, and he has been rewarded as a result as this team's wide receiver for a bummer of getting the ankle injury. Hopefully he can play in week two of the preseason. Moving on to the tight end room, we get our first real surprise here. Adam Trotman, the former New Orleans Saints player, who Denver acquired via trade midway through this year's draft. He is tight end one. And Greg Dulcich, the flow and the hammies, he's tight end two ahead of Chris Manhurts, a blocking tight end who they signed this year. And look at Albert Okuwebunam all the way at the bottom of the depth chart. But let's start with Greg Dulcich, who finds himself as tight end two. This is another moment where you see often in preseason depth charts the veterans get the benefit of the doubt. They start towards the top of the depth chart, and it's up to the younger guys to prove to the coaching staff over the course of training camp in the preseason that they should be at the top of the food chain. Now, some background here on Adam Trotman. He was a New Orleans Saint player under Sean Payton for a couple of seasons. He never really showed out all that much. Never went over 263 yards, two touchdowns, a career high for an individual season, which he did two years ago. This one definitely surprised me. I thought Greg Dulcich was the runaway tight end one. And honestly, I don't want to take a victory lap because I think we could see a change by the time week one rolls around. But this is why I've sort of pumped the brakes on Greg Dulcich. Immediate breakout season coming. I don't think they're going to pass the ball enough for Greg Dulcich to get enough targets than to get enough receptions and then get enough yards and touchdowns to have a breakout year. And the coaching staff clearly has been just not like completely wowed or blown away by Dulcich through the first two weeks of camp. So the veteran Trotman gets the air or gets the nod to be the starting tight end on the first depth chart. But again, it's preseason week one. You will see changes before the regular season. 
But we did see Albert O stay at tight end five. And this one, I don't think we're going to see any big changes, at least not on the Broncos depth chart. I think you could see Albert Okuebernam get traded. This one would not come as a surprise. He is at the bottom of the totem pole for Denver. After the first preseason or two games in the books, you're going to see some teams start dealing with more and more injuries. So if a team loses their tight end two, they might give Denver a call and say, hey, Albert O, he's got some good you know, career stats behind him. We know he's a bit of a proven player. We know who he is. We'd rather go that route than try and find some no-name tight end off the street. Can we throw you a 2025 conditional seventh rounder in exchange for your tight end five? And I bet Denver would go, you know what, we'll take a seventh, but also let's give Alberto an opportunity to play somewhere else because he's not going to be end up, he's not going to be playing here. Now going back to Greg Dulcich, do you guys think he's going to have a breakout season? I don't think it's going to be as big as a big of a season as other people do. But if you disagree, perfectly fine. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. On to the offensive line. No real surprises here. Garrett Bowles, Ben Powers, Lloyd Cushenberry, Quinn Miners, and Mike McGlinchey are your five starters. Cam Fleming is your swing tackle. Like I mentioned earlier, McGlinchey is dealing with a knee sprain he sustained yesterday in practice. If he misses some regular season time, it'll be Cam Fleming stepping in at right tackle to replace him. Moving on to the defensive line now. So we do get a bit of a... Uh, I wouldn't say curveball, but maybe a breaking ball. How about that? Zach Allen and DJ Jones, no doubters. They are your starting defensive end and nose tackle. But Jonathan Harris is the starting defensive tackle for the first depth chart. And this one did surprise me a little bit just because he wasn't all that impressive last season. Didn't really move the needle a whole lot for me. He's been a journeyman player. It's great to see him stick with it and finally get an opportunity last year. Unfortunately, injuries caused him to miss half of the season. But Jonathan Harris starting was not something I necessarily had on my bingo card as a lock for 2023. And I still think this is a spot where you might see some changes on the defensive line where you could see. And also, I will add, Mike Purcell is dealing with a knee injury so or a lower leg injury. So he is out for now. But maybe you see the second-year player, Matt Henningsen, take over from Jonathan Harris. Or maybe it's Tyler Lancaster who steps in and fills in for Harris. This is definitely a spot where you could see a change at defensive line. Now, before we get on to the rest of our show today, if you're enjoying the free content we are producing here, consider subscribing. I know it's the YouTube cliche in me, but it definitely goes a long way. Because if we get more subscribers, I can go to my bosses and say, hey, give me more studio space, and then you guys get more content. It's a beautiful chat sports circle of life, but I need you guys to, to subscribe to make it work. Now, on to the linebackers here. Randy Gregory, Alex Singleton, Josie Jewell, and Frank Clark are the initial starters. Baron Browning, remember, is on the pup list, and if he stays on the pup list to start the regular season, he will miss the first four weeks of the year. But Nick Benito is backing up Randy Gregory, Jonathan Cooper behind Frank Clark, no real big surprises here, in my opinion. This seems pretty chalk and pretty uh, you know, uh, self-explanatory. As for the secondary now, starting with the corners, Pat Sertan, Damari Mathis, and Kwan Williams are your expected starters. Riley Moss will, remiss, will miss the entirety of the preseason after getting core muscle surgery. So Riley Moss was really the only guy who could contend to try and steal. <gasps> Excuse me, bad time for hiccup a starting role, but I think the cornerback room is pretty chalk as well. Now, the safety room, that is a different story. You have Justin Simmons starting, but then you've got some college football depth charts going on here with Kareem Jackson and Caden Stearns listed as co-starters next to Justin Simmons. So I am going to tell you guys in just a moment who I'd like to see emerge as that clear starter next to Justin Simmons. But before I do... The 2023 Broncos sideline hats are here. And so if you want to cop one of the hats that Denver will be wearing on the sideline all year long, go to chatsports.com slash Broncos hat. That link's in the comments and the description of today's show. So Caden Stearns has an opportunity to try and steal, I would say, the starting job from the incumbent veteran Kareem Jackson. I'm a big Caden Stearns fan. I am the president of the Caden Stearns fan club. Producer Coop 
yep, is a Texas fan, so he loves Caden Stearns. The guy's awesome. I mean, look at what he's done in his career. Just 20 games, and that, unfortunately, is maybe the most important number. He has been limited due to injuries throughout his young NFL career, but the guy's got four picks in 20 games and two sacks and nine pass breakups. If you can get Caden Stearns for 17 weeks, he is going to form one of the best safety combinations, if not arguably the best. That might be a bit ambitious, but I love me some Justin Simmons and Caden Stearns. So pick a safety for me. No offense to Kareem Jackson. You know what you're getting in K-Jack. You're getting a reliable safety. He's not going to have any big miscues, but he's not going to make any dazzling plays in my opinion. But Caden Stearns, he has made some incredible plays while he is filled, uh, excuse me, filled in for Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson throughout their time in Denver. So I'd love to see 30 emerge as the starter, but let me know who you'd like to see start down below. For special teams, they have a, uh, you know, same thing as Caden Stearns and Kareem Jackson. It's a slash between Elliot Fry and Brett Maher listed as co-starters, so no guy giving the edge. But Marvin Mims was listed as the starting return man over Montreal Washington. Yikes. If Montreal Washington isn't getting on the field for offense as a wide receiver, and he's not getting on the field for special teams as a return man, I don't know how he makes this roster. And I know it's only one year into the former fifth-round pick's career, but it wasn't Sean Payton's selection. And what happened the moment Hackett got canned last year? One of the first moves the interim head coach made was, Montreal Washington, you're off special teams. So if Marvin Mims continues to steal time on the field as a punt and kick returner, I worry about Washington's spot on this roster. So some overall takeaways I've got after looking at the first depth chart. Caden Stearns versus Kareem Jackson, who emerges as that week one starting safety. Greg Dulcich at tight end two definitely caught me by surprise. I don't know if that speaks more to Adam Trotman has been awesome in camp or Greg Dulcich has been underwhelming or they're just giving the starting jobs to all the veterans and the younger guys have to show up and prove it to the coaching staff over the next three preseason games that they deserve the starting role. I also think Denver's defensive line needs a little bit of TLC. Jonathan Hare is starting for you. Sorry, Jonathan, if you're watching. That's not a lot of confidence right there, right? This defensive line is a little bit suspect. Where DJ Jones was nice last year, probably didn't live up to the free agent contract they gave him. And Zach Allen is hopefully going to break out, but we've never actually seen it happen before. So there's a lot of optimism in the defensive line. And if it doesn't all get done, it's not going to be a great day in the trenches for Denver. Now some quick injury news. Oh, and then Brad Maher versus Elliott Fry for the kicking job. Mike McGlinchey, like I talked about earlier, he's expected to miss a couple of weeks with a knee sprain, according to Mike Kliss. If he does miss some time week one against the Raiders, well, that's Max Crosby in the Raiders, and that would be Cam Fleming going up against Max Crosby potentially. And last year when we got that matchup, it was not a good ending. So they really need Mike McGlinchey back for the first week of the regular season. Mike McGlinchey, he's an NFL vet. He doesn't really need the preseason. Shut him down. Don't push the knee injury. Rest him up and get him ready for September 10th against the Raiders. All right, some hot takes now for today's show. It is 83 degrees today in Denver. So another warm plate take. I feel like a weatherman at this point every day going over Denver's weather habits. And it's been right there between 80 to 84 degrees the last week or so. But my warm plate take for today's show is I think Denver adds a defensive lineman before week one. I think they are going to be hawks on the waiver wire as cuts get made. They are going to be focusing on defensive linemen getting cut because they're looking at their own backyard going, if Mike Purcell misses some time, we are one injury away from DJ Jones or Zach Allen to some UDFA starting like PJ Mustafer and Garcia. And that's not very intimidating for an opposing offensive line. So I... I think you can expect Denver to add some more bodies to that defensive line. 